first. What's your name, Doctor? Cleveland. First, we want to thank you for allowing us to come uh, stand before you and bring the gospel to you. Doing this in this time we're in right now, a lot of people ain't really cracking this book. You know, um, you know, you got a lot of people taking part in a lot of worship that the Lord ain't approving. Okay. So what we want to do is first, I just want to you know, thank you for allowing us to come before you. And then on top of that, we want to go into this Bible. Yeah. Identify the people this book is talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm um, also we was gonna we was gonna start it off with the Sabbath, but um, you know that 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 that'll come in time. You know what I'm saying? But we want to start first with our identity of who the Lord chose to do His work. Not to say that everybody can't get salvation, but anybody can get salvation. But if there's a protocol that the Lord set up. We got to know what this protocol is in order for us to get even even get to the kingdom. That's why Christ told the lady in John 4 and 22, you know not what you worship, we know who worship the salvation of the of the Jews. So you need to find out who the Jews are so they can let you know how to get salvation. And that just fly by a lot of people. But when Christ spoke, Christ was speaking, he said things that what he, he said things that he meant. It wasn't just for you to just take those things and use them as proverbs and get happy on this Sunday. He left this book. And it was for us to read out. So we're going to start off in Isaiah 34 16. Let's see what it's saying. Right. And then we want, to, we want to halt, we want to kind of run down this covenant that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he made with the children of Israel. We're going to identify these people according to the book. What did Isaiah 34 and 16 say, brother? Seek you out of the book uh -huh. of the Lord and read. So the scriptures say, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and do what? And read. And read. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. No one of these shall fail. Go ahead. None shall want her mate. None shall want her mate. So that book don't need no Quran. That book don't need no history book. It can speak by itself. That's why I say none shall want her mate. Can you read, brother? For my mouth it have commanded. Uh-huh. And this spirit it have gathered them. So for, for my mouth it have commanded, and this spirit it have gathered them. So everything that he said gotta come, gotta come to faith. Everything in this book gotta come to faith. Just like we standing before you this day, knowing our history according to this Bible, it had to come to pass. Because he said in the latter time, the knowledge, the, the knowledge would increase. And that's what's starting to happen right now. Go and finish that break. That's it. Let's go to Deuteronomy 29. And that's one thing we do, Pastor. We do a lot of reading. We read the book. You know what I'm saying? We go through this book. That's what, that's what Christ did when he went and stood in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. What he did, he read. He stood up and read. That's what the prophets did. They read the book. Anytime you're in service, you should be in service reading that book the whole time you're there. It's okay to pray. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. And then when you get done, the rest of that time you're in, this, in, that, in service, y'all need to be going through this book, going through these scriptures, and getting an understanding on what it is that he left for the children of Israel to do, and how we're supposed to bring this gospel out the world. Deuteronomy 29, verse 1, bro. Go and read that. One and two, brother. These are the words of the covenant. You there? Which? Which? You there? You there, bro? Yeah, all right. Deuteronomy 29, go ahead. These are the words of the covenant uh -huh. which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, uh -huh. besides the covenant which he made with them in Moab. Right, so these are the words of the covenant that Moses had to go before the children of Israel, and he had to, he had to tell them these words that was given to him by the Lord. Okay? Where you at, verse 2? Yeah. Go ahead. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh mm -hmm. and unto all his servants and unto all his land. Right, so he's letting them know y'all seen everything that the Lord did, okay? When he brought y'all out of Egypt, y'all saw all the miracles. You saw that you, you saw the power I gave Moses when he split the Red Sea. You saw when I he sent the plagues through the land. Y'all saw everything that he did. So you don't need no more convincing. Okay? Go and drop down to verse 10. 10 through 15, go ahead. You stand this day, all of you, uh -huh. of the Lord your God, Go ahead. your pastors of your tribes, uh -huh. your elders, and your officers, with all of the men uh -huh. of Israel. Right, so these are all the people that were standing before Moses at this time to get ready to make this covenant now. They couldn't come into an agreement. Okay? That's why he said, You stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains, your captain, captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel. Go ahead. 
Your little one. Your little one. Your wife. Uh huh. And thy stranger that was in thy camp. So even the stranger that was that was up under Israel, even they stood before the Lord that day to get the law, statutes, and commandments. Can you read? From the hero of thy wood uh -huh. under the draw of thy water. Right. Even from down down to the person that gathered the wood all the way down to the person that uh, uh, draw the water. Go ahead and read. That thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God uh -huh. and into His oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. Go ahead. That he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, uh -huh. and that he may be unto thee a God as he hath said unto thee, mm -hmm. and as he hath sworn unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Go ahead. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with, who? But with him that standeth here with us this day uh -huh. before the Lord our God, uh -huh. and also with him that is not here with us this day. So when you get back in, because it said also with those who are not here this day. So we went there back then, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, verse, uh, drop down to verse 22. Nathan, get over there, please. All the way over. So that the generation. So that the what now? The generation to come of your children uh -huh. that shall rise up after you. Uh -huh. and, the, and the stranger that shall come from a far land mm -hmm. shall say, when they see the plagues of that land mm -hmm. and the sickness and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it, Go ahead. and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt mm -hmm. and burden, that it is not sown, nor bear any nor bear, nor any grass groweth therein. Right. Keep going. Like the overthrow of Saddam and Gomorrah, uh -huh. Adma and Zebor, which the Lord overthrew in his anger mm -hmm. and in his wrath. Go ahead, bro. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this land? Mm -hmm. What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Right, so if we were to keep these commandments, then we would have had everything that it told us. Being the head, not the tail. You understand? Never, never, always above, never beneath. All right? So we, when we got down to verse 29 there, it was letting you know if we didn't keep them, what people were going to say when they came into the land. Okay? Go to 25, what it say, bro? Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord of their fathers, mm -hmm. which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Right, so why, why is the land like this now? And what land is it talking about? It's talking about the land of Israel. Why is the land like it is now? Why can't it grow anymore? Why is the grass burnt? Why they got to bring food in? Why? Because the land is now desolate. Even to this day, it's desolate. Keep reading, bro. For they went and served other gods. They did what? They served other gods. So that's where you get your Christmas from. That's where you got your Easter from, your Thanksgiving. These are other gods that you worship. That image Caesar the the, the the that guy here, that's another image. The Lord told you he never put no, he, he never gave us an image in him. You understand what I'm saying? He said no graven images at all. So these images that we have in church, these are other gods that we worship. See, this is the God that gave you Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. That's why the Bible tells you, 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, beware uh, of those that come preaching another Jesus. Who is that other Jesus? That other Jesus gives you Thanksgiving. That other Jesus gives you Sunday worship and Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving. You can't find that in this book. Keep reading, bro. Go down to 29. Where you at? Uh, Go ahead. Well, they serve other gods and worship them. Uh huh. Gods whom they knew not, uh -huh. and whom he had not given us. Right, so the Lord didn't give us these other gods. The Lord didn't give us the, the, the stones and leather that a lot of, of so-called Muslims go over to the land and kid, want to kiss that stone during their pilgrimage before they die. The Lord didn't give us them. But he going to tell you, since you want to do that, I'm going to give you gods of wood and stone. Since you want to go against me, I'm going to give you gods of wood and stone. And just so you know, that was Christ that was talking. Just, just, just love, because a lot of us think that that was... God in the Old Testament and Christ came in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, that was Christ talking the whole time. That's why in the beginning of the book it said, let us make man in our image. Who was the us? It wasn't angel. Because the angel ain't in the form of a man. You understand what I'm saying? But just to verify that, in the New Testament, Christ came and said, no man has seen the Father at any time or heard his voice. So who was that they was talking to? That was Christ. And the book tells you that. But let's keep reading, bro. Where you at? 27. Go ahead. Uh, 28. Mm -hmm. And the Lord rooted them out of their land. So the Lord anger. took them out of their land in anger. Go ahead. And in wrath. Uh -huh. And in great indignation. Uh -huh. And cast them into another land as it is this day. Right. So what nation of people got cast into another land? What nation of people got rooted out of the land? See, we're we going to let the, we gonna let the book hog it down. We ain't going to say that yet. We're going to let the book hog it down. Now let's go take a look at some of these curses to identify this people. 
Okay? Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 28. We're going to start at 29. Deuteronomy 28 and chapter 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as a blind grope in darkness. Say, so, and thou shalt grope at the noonday. Go ahead. As the blind grope in darkness. As the blind grope in darkness. Go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Uh huh. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Uh huh. And no man shall save. Thee. And no man shall save. You You're gonna grope at the noonday, meaning you lost. You looking for something. What a blind person do. When a blind person is blind here and he can't, he don't have his cane, and say he's trying to walk to the bathroom in an unfamiliar area, what are he gonna do? He's gonna broke. He's trying to find his way. And there's a certain people that's on this earth today that's groping at the noonday. Even in the daytime in the noonday, when it's bright outside, the scriptures say you're gonna broke. Meaning you're gonna be looking for who you are. You're gonna be trying to find out who you are. You're gonna be trying to find leaders that can tell you the truth. You're gonna be looking to Martin Luther King for him to tell you that he been to the mountaintop and one day you come. You're gonna be looking, but you ain't gonna find. Keep on reading, bro. Go and drop down to uh, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people, uh huh. And thine eyes shall look and fell with longing for them all the day long. Uh huh. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Right, so let me ask you something. If the book say you're going to always be oppressed, what nation of people around the world that's, that's still in oppression? I mean, literally think about it. What nation of people still in oppression? Like even you got a, a president in the seat that, that you say, that they say was supposed to do things for us, and ain't nothing changed. Matter of fact, it got worse. You still oppressed. You still in your captivity. Why? <laughs> we don't let the book hold it down. Keep reading, bro. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes. You're going to be mad for the sight of your eyes. You're going to hate going through the stuff you're going through. We're going to keep trying. We're going to keep trying to come out of this. We're going to talk to other brothers on the phone and say, man, we need to come together and start a movement. We need to work together and see if we can come out of this, man. We need to start binding our own neighborhoods. Lord said, so you're going to always be oppressed. Why? Because didn't we read earlier that he set a covenant before them? He set a covenant before them. And, and what did the book say? It, the covenant is stand even until this day. So that means we still got to walk according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the covenant that was given. So you got to understand, when they spoke, when, the, when the, the children of Israel were standing before the Lord back in the day, guess what they did? They said that we all the, all the things that the Lord said, we will do us and our children. So they were speaking for us, and we weren't even there at that time. So guess what? The opposite of that blessing that they were so-called signing off on because they went against what they said they was going to do. The blessing that they were signing off on, there's the other side to that, and that's a curse. So instead of us getting hit with the blessing, we got hawked down by the curse. And this curse is still on us today, but ain't nobody telling us this. Keep reading, bro. Where you at? In the verse 34. Go ahead. Which thou shalt see. Uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee in, thy, in the knees uh -huh. and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed Go ahead. from the sole of thy foot until the top of thy head. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou set over thee to a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And there shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone. That wood and stone is what? Those crosses. That stone is what? That Mecca. Trying to kiss them. Go, get, get over the Mecca man and kiss them stone. Them crosses. Those crosses represent crucifixion of somebody dying. They had crucifixion. They had up to five, six hundred crucifixions in one day. So that's like me today wearing an electric chair around my neck to celebrate the death of one of my friends or something. No images at all. But we're a nation of people going completely backwards. Go ahead and drop down to verse 43, man. Well, hit uh, 37 right quick. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Uh -huh. A proverb Go ahead. and a byword uh -huh. among all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. So the book says you're going to become an astonishment. That's why everywhere we go, people look at us like we have. We're an astonishment, man. We're an amazement to people. And another astonishment is that how we went through everything we went through, our fathers went through everything, uh, and foremothers went through everything they went through, and we still alive today. That's an astonishment. 
that a lot of people would be probably gone by now. We should have been gone. But the Lord is, is saving his remnant to come through this. Keep on reading, bro. Where you at? Beginning of 38. Uh-huh. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, uh -huh. and shalt gather but little wind. And that's what we did back in the day. Go out into the field, plant the vineyards and stuff like that. We wouldn't gather nothing. They didn't belong to us. We used to plant vineyards for other people. But at the beginning of at the beginning of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, you saw the blessing. If you did what he said, then your land was gonna be plentiful. But if you went against what he said, your land was gonna be desolate. You was gonna plant vineyards and you weren't gonna be able to enjoy them vineyards. So just think back to the 1800s and 1600s when we came off the slave ships and we was planting vineyards and we didn't enjoy that. But it had nothing to do with a white man because when we read, when we first started, it said the Lord is the one that was going to do this. We broke the covenant with the Lord. We didn't break it with a man. A man can't, can't, can't call this the end of it from the beginning. And that's how this plot of us was called from the beginning. Go ahead and read what you got, man. Verse 43. The stranger that is with, within thee shall get up above thee very high. Right. And the stranger that's within you shall get up above thee very high. Go ahead. And thou shalt come down very low. And you're going to come down very low. So even back in the day when we had strangers in our camp that would be going to get the water for us, the Lord said the stranger going to come up before you and you're going to come down very low. Even the stranger going to be above you. Go ahead and read, bro. He shall lend to thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt not lend to him. So he gonna lend, even the stranger gonna lend to us. Go to your banks. Go to your banks. Show me an African American bank around here where I'm gonna get some money lent to me at. I bet you can't find one. If you find one, it's probably something that's put up by our society. I mean, a, a sorority. But for the most part, you don't see them nowhere. Because the Lord said we gonna be the borrower, not the lender. But we would have been the lender and not the borrower if we would have kept the law, statutes, and commandments. Keep on reading, bro. He shall be the head, uh -huh. and thou shalt be the tail. He shall be the head, and we're going to be the tail. Go ahead. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, uh -huh. and shall pursue thee, Go ahead. and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Uh -huh. Because thou hearkenest not to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Uh -huh. And they shall be upon, thy, upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, upon thy seed forever. Right, so the book says it's going to be a sign of curses going to be a sign and the wonder upon us forever. And like one of the elders say, a sign identifies something. A sign identifies a, a, a person. All you got to do when you think about poverty, who you think about? Us. That's a sign. You think about people being locked up in prison, who you think about? Us. You think about AIDS and gonorrhea and herpes, you think about us. You think about men leaving the house not taking care of their children, who you think about? Us. That's a sign. Keep on reading, bro. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst uh -huh. and in nakedness yeah. and in one of all things. And he's going to do what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Where that picture where, where uh, they got a yoke of iron on thy neck? See that right there? That's a yoke of iron right there. See that yoke of iron? That's coming out the book. The Lord said he was going to put a yoke of iron in your neck. And that's what they put on our neck. When our forefathers tried to escape, they put the yoke of iron on so they couldn't get out of the woods. They was trapped. They couldn't go nowhere. And then also he said, you're going to worship them in one of all things, in nakedness and in thirst. What else he say? He said, uh, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies uh, in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. So anytime you want to get food, who you got to go to to get your food? Your food is mainly in the, in the shops. Walmart, Kroger, you don't own that. Your clothes, JCPenney, Sears, Walmart again, you don't own that. Kmart, you don't own that. You might have a little brother, you know, getting getting uh, uh, clothes from up, uptown New York or whatever, and they send them down here, they may sell them out of the back of their trunk. But guess what? You still had to go to somebody else to get it. It ain't like you got sweatshops in your backyard creating clothes. Lord said, you're going to have to go to your enemy and want of all things, and nakedness and in thirst. Go and drop down to verse 54, man. So, so, so that the man that is tender among you, uh -huh. and very delicate, go ahead. his eyes shall be evil toward his brother, uh -huh. and toward his wife of his bosom, uh -huh. and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. So the scriptures say, the man that is tender among you, 
they gonna end up being evil. The one you used to have respect for the elders. We we'll reverence the elders. You know what I'm saying? We had pride about taking care of our families at, at, at some point. He said that I'm gonna be evil towards his brother. That's why you see a lot of young brothers now going up and down the street. Now we look at each other and stare at each other like you're crazy, man. Brother can walk past me, I don't even know. Shoot me right on the spot. Because the book says his eye gonna be evil toward his brother. And just so you know, so to, so to bring it home a little bit, it said toward the wife of his bosom. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. What nation of people you know fills up the Mark Povich show? I talk about the blacks. That's right. But I want to, if you don't mind, I want to interject right. where, where um, you mentioned about the uh, uh, young black man. A lot of them are lost because where I grew up, I was born in the South, and the mentoring, such as older gentlemen like myself, like yourself, like this self, mm -hmm. forgot about this guy right here when we saw him in the street where we would pull him aside years ago and talk to him guide him and instruct him. Mm -hmm. Don't let him get away with some of the stuff that they get away. Mm -hmm. That's the way I was brought up. A right. lot of that mentoring among blacks, among us, are lost now. Well, that's, the, that's, the, that's, that's where we used to be gentle. The man that was gentle among you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I was saying, we had respect for one another. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't mind. I remember back in the day, uh, I would get chastised by somebody else in the church. I mean, there wasn't no extreme whoopings or nothing like that, but I still feared other men in the church when I was coming up, even though they might not have been taught right according to the scripture, I still feared them because I knew they could whoop me the same way my father could. You understand what I'm saying? But now it's completely gone. Now we don't care, man. You can't touch us, nothing like that. Matter of fact, they got laws set up where you can't hit nobody. You can't, the, the parents can't even hit their own children or spank them or chastise them or correct them. But it all goes back to what the Lord said was going to happen. Your eye was going to be evil towards your brother. So now you got elders don't even want to come deal with us. Don't even want to come talk to us. Why? Because we, not only, not only are we going backwards, we also pose a threat. You know what I'm saying? Because, of the, because the respect is gone out of the household. The respect is gone for us and how we felt about, you know, the elders back in the day. So they don't want to deal with us and we don't want to deal with them. And I'm just saying, not me per se, but I'm just saying the generations now. It's a difference. The, the generations are completely separated now. But you can't blame nobody for this but the Lord. And I can't really blame him because he set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. If we would have kept his law, statutes, and commandments, we would still be at the top. But we broke them, so we at the bottom. Go ahead, keep reading, man. Where you at? Forget him, 55. Beginning 55? Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children. Drop down to 56. Let's see who else is going to cover. Now we done covered the man. They say the man going to hate his wife and leave the remnant of his children. Let's see if the wife going to do it. Go ahead. The tender and delicate woman among you, uh -huh. which which would not venture to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness mm -hmm. and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom. Right, she don't like her husband either. I don't need you. You can get out. I can do it myself. I don't need you. You ain't nothing. But that's 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 completely out of order. But it's that curse. Go ahead, read, bro. And toward her son. Uh huh. And toward her daughter. So she gonna be her eye gonna be even toward her son and daughter also. So don't count it a strange thing when you see a young lady take a child and drop it in a dumpster. It's in the book. He said her eye gonna be even toward her son and her daughter. It's just a lot of these cases ain't being reported. Go ahead, keep reading, bro. Go ahead and drop down to verse uh, 65. I mean, 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, uh -huh. which is not written in the book of this law, uh -huh. then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So who, who the main one filled with AIDS? Matter of fact, you got a book that, that tell you, man, that, uh, they actually, they actually plotted and created AIDS to kill off us. That plague wasn't in this book. 
<laughs> well, he covered it just in case you did get it. You covered it. I'm going to hit you with plagues that ain't in the book. So anytime you see the government creating different diseases, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Since you want to serve other gods, you don't want to do what I say. You don't want to keep my law, statutes, and commandments. I'm going to hit you with everything. I'm going to hit you from diabetes. I'm going to hit you with cancer. I'm going to hit you with AIDS. I'm going to break your house up. I'm going to have you to the point where you're scared to leave your house and you're scared to come back in your house. You ain't going to want to walk down the sidewalk. Why? Because you're going to be trembling for your life. Since you want to disobey and go against me, I'm going to turn my face from you. I'm going to act like I don't even see you. And that's what we're dealing with. See, a lot of us think we're dealing with a God that play games. That's going to come back and make us think that everything is okay. Like he cool with what's going on. That ain't the God of this book. The God of this book will kill you instantly and won't think twice about it. That's why he told Moses. What he told Moses? Step to the side. He was going to start up a new generation through Moses. But Moses had to remind him of his word. Look, hey, uh, Lord, you just brought him out. You just brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. So if you kill them, they're going to think that you ain't got no power to control these children. So the Lord repented of it and said, okay, I ain't going to do it. But we're thinking that we can play with this God. The same God that did what he did back in the day and caused all that destruction on the Egyptians when they had the Israelites in captivity. The same God going to bring ruckus on this world for the disobedience. All the Sodom, all the Sodomites, all the stuff that's going against this book, the Sunday worship, the eating pork, going against him. The Lord said when he returns, he's going to consume those eating swine flesh. And that's in Isaiah 66 and 17 in the book. When he get back, he going to kill those eating swine flesh. Remember the scripture so you can see it for yourself. In the meantime, I'm going to keep jacking you up with diabetes. I'm going to keep jacking you up with cancer. Because you don't want to listen. Stiff necked people, rebellious people. That's what he called. That's what the prophets came to say. Stiff necked people, rebellious people. Don't want to hear the law of the Lord. That say to the seer, see not. Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. So that's why people want to hear about prosperity. They don't want to hear about the God of this Bible. They want to hear about if I sow my seed, I'm going to get a hundredfold return. I was one of those. That's all I wanted to hear. But at the same time, the Lord woke me up. If it ain't coming out this book, put it down. The scripture even tells us that we're not even supposed to celebrate Christmas. That's in the book. Jeremiah 10. And that's why we started the scripture off with read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's what's going to get you salvation. Read the law, statutes, and the commandments of this book. Get an understanding on it and do it. Let's go on to what's the name, man. Let's get down to verse, uh, where you at? Uh, beginning of 62. Go ahead. And you shall be left few in number. Uh huh. Whereas you were as the stars of heaven. For now, we used to be as the stars of heaven, but the book said we're going to be left few in number, right? Right? So why don't you pull up a, what, what are called? Call a pole? Pull up a pole, right? Who at the bottom of the pole? Huh? Who at the bottom of the pole? Yeah. Are, we the, are we the majority or the minority? Minority. The Lord said you're going to be few in number. Now, you got other nations coming over to America. Guess what? You still few in number. You were as the the stars. You were like the the numbers of the stars, which can't be numbered. Now you few and numb. Keep on reading, bro. Because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh huh. And it shall come to pass as the Lord rejoice over you to do good. Uh huh. And to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. So the Lord is rejoicing over our destruction right now. Cause He was rejoicing over us when He was multiplying us. When we was his people, we still his people. Now, don't get me wrong, because at the end, he said he's going to call us back. And that's what's happening right now. That's why we're starting to understand this book now. But he said he was going to rejoice over us to do us good if we would have kept the law, statutes, and commandments. We broke it. Now he's rejoicing over to do us harm and bring evil among us. Keep on reading, brother. And to bring you not, uh -huh. and you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So let me ask you something. The people in Israel today, these people right here, where is it at? 
Right there. Right. Let me see that poster, brother. These people right here. Where they plucked off the land? Where they plucked off the land? Mm -hmm. What land were they plucked off? Those are blacks? No, these are, these are those people in the land of Israel who call themselves Jews. Mm -hmm. Were they plucked off any land? Were they plucked off any land? Mm -hmm. Think about the question. The Lord said the Israelites are going to be plucked off the land and removed. When were they removed off the land? They're still here. I'm saying, were they ever plucked, were they ever removed off the land and taken into captivity? Mm -hmm. Were they? They were. No. So how could they be the one that fit this book? Only one nation of people got plucked off the land and got scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We're going to keep reading. I'm going to show you that. Keep reading, bro. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. What the book say? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. It says the Lord is going to scatter you among all people. Everywhere. You can leave Florida, go to South Carolina, you're going to find a Negro. You can leave South Carolina, go to Bahamas, guess what? You're going to find a Negro. Go in the deepest, darkest caves of Africa. You're going to find a Negro. The Lord said, I'm going to scatter you everywhere. Keep reading, bro. From the one end of the earth, uh -huh. even to the other. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, right. even wood and stone. Right. He said, you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. So that's that God he was talking about. I'm going to send you into another land. You're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. That wood right there, that's another god. That's the, what the book was talking about. That, that rock they want to kiss when they go over to uh, Mecca, that's that stone he was talking about. That stone that they built up in Washington, D.C. and everybody trying to uh, catch a flight to go see that stone, Martin Luther King. That's a stone. These are your gods. You ain't worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob no more because you done made a man. So now I got to bring you out. Keep on reading, brother. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. And among these nations, you ain't going to find no ease. You can talk about reparations all day long. You ain't finding no ease. Keep reading, brother. Neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest. Uh-huh. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling of heart. A trembling of heart. Keep reading, brother. And failing of eyes. And failing of eyes. That, that trembling of heart. You got a lot of brothers, like we like to say, man, we ride in the car, get put up by the police, man, we tremble. We can be mad, everything on the car can be legit. Tags can be legit, insurance can be legit. Lights and everything work, brakes work, everything is fine. Don't smoke no weed, just leaving church. Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But the book says, I'm gonna give you a trembling of heart. Only one person is fit. Keep reading, bro. And the felling of eyes, uh -huh. and the sorrow of mind. Go ahead. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Your life gonna hang in doubt before you, go ahead. And thou shalt fear day and night. And you're going to fear day and night, uh-huh. And shall have no, none assurance of thy life. You're going to have none assurance of your life. Go and drop down to verse 16. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now the book say the Lord going to bring you into Egypt again with what? Ships. Ships. Now, before we go on, let's get Exodus 20. And let's see what this word Egypt means according to the Bible. See, what a lot of people got to understand that Egypt was not the original name of the land Egypt right now. Ham had sons that went into that land. One of the sons he had was Mizraim. Okay? The land of Mizraim was named after Ham's son. Okay? But when the children of Israel went into captivity in the land of Mizraim, that was known to us as our first bondage or our first slavery. So when we came out and they renamed it, they named it Egypt. Why? Because Egypt means house of bondage or a condition of slavery. So the Lord say, I'm going to send you into Egypt again with ships. He let you know I'm going to send you back into Egypt. Not the Egypt that you know, because he told us we ain't going back to that one. I'm going to send you into another Egypt. And what Egypt was that? That we came out on ships on. We went into all the four corners of the earth when we got off the west coast of Africa and we got scattered by ships. That was us on the bottom of these ships right there that went into captivity. And the book called it before we even came into captivity. The book spoke it. And that's why they don't want you reading Old Testament. Because they don't want you knowing your history. If you know your history and wake up, then you can't be under oppression no more. 
That's why the book says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. free. It's going to make you free because you ain't under the mindset of what the, the, the bond is, the yoke of iron that they got you under now. You ain't under that no more because you know the truth now. You know that this was us in the slave ship. It wasn't Africans. Because originally we came from the land of Canaan and went down into Africa running from the Romans. And once we ran from the Romans, the Africans and all the other nations gathered up the Israelites and sold us into captivity. And that's how we got to America. That's how we got down to Jamaica. That's how we got to Haiti. That's how we got to Brazil. That's how we got to all the four different corners of the earth because the Lord said, I'm going to send you into Egypt again with ships. And what's going to happen? Hold on, read what you got, Exodus 22, what does it say? I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. So the book says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Let's get another one. Let's get another, another definition of this word Egypt according to the book. Let's see if it says house of bondage again. What you got? Uh huh. Or Exodus 13 and 3. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which brought thee out of out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. From the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. There you go again. We can go like we can go two more places. We can go throughout the whole book. Yeah, about ten more, man. Where they tie Egypt, meaning house of bondage. That's why in America the Israelites sit in captivity today. But keep reading. Do me a favor. Sit down, please. Sit down. You know better. Get over there in the, in the center right there. Go and read what you got. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the book say the Lord gonna bring you into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereby spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Go ahead. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So you gonna be what? Sold, sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bottom of So who's that on the slave blocks right there being sold? When that us being sold? Blacks. Yeah, it wasn't Africans. That was us being sold. Just so you know, that was us being sold. That's what the book was talking about. You understand? The book said you're going to be sold to your enemies as bond men, which is the male slave, and bond women, which is the female slave. Keep reading, bro. And no man shall buy you. Martin Luther King ain't going to free you. That word buy means redeem. Set free. The Lord said, ain't no man going to buy you. Ain't no man going to free you. Ain't no man going to get you out of this. You know why? Because when he get back, that's when he's going to grab us out of this captivity. That's in the book. That's in the book, but by us not reading, we have no understanding. A lot of the pastors, I, I mean, it's as quiet as it kept. They being taught by people who don't know this book. What you think? What you think? How you think the, the schools were set up? The theology schools? They were set up by Gentiles who don't know the book. Because the Lord said, of all families of the earth, only you have I known. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Meaning the Israelites, I gave the gospel to the Israelites. I didn't give it to nobody else. So in all these theology schools, you've been sitting up here all this time under these preachers for 20 and 30 years and still in the same condition. Because the knowledge that we got from them ain't got nothing to do with this book. Nothing. The Lord say keep the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. Theology tells you to do what? Keep the first day, Sunday. The Lord say honor my death, what the theology school say? Honor his birth, December 25th, which is actually the worshiping of the sun or giving honor to Nimrod out of Babylon. Goes completely against what the Lord said. He tells us to keep Passover throughout our generations until he returned. We say now we're going to keep Easter, which was set up on orgies. Finally in the book one time, and that's when Herod was talking about what they was going to do to uh, Peter, wasn't it? What they was going to do to Peter after they finished celebrating Easter, they was going to uh, kill, have Peter kill. That's what they were celebrating. Christ was doing that time when Christ was here, they was keeping all that wickedness. Everything you got today goes all the way back to Babylon. That cross right there, that goes back to Tammuz. That the Lord, uh, 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 when they walked in the room, they seen the girls and they're crying over Tammuz. That's what the T stands for. 
And some people use it for the crowd. Goes completely against this book. So when the Lord returns, when he brings his wrath, when he gets back, he brings it. He brings it. That's why the book says he's coming back with a vesture dipped in blood. Meaning he's going to do a lot of killing. A lot of us got to go. You don't want to do what the book say? Then your plight is already determined. Your end is already set. Your destination is already arrived. Where we at, man? Go to Leviticus 26 right quick. Let's start at verse 1. 1 through 4. Go ahead. You shall make unto you no idols, nor graven images. What the book say? You shall make unto you no idols, nor graven images. But you can keep some profit. No idols. But you can put some images of, 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 of Caesar Boy's ear in the church. It's okay. What the book say? Neither rear you up a uh -huh. standing image. Go ahead. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. No images. No images. Clearly, you see, we go against that. We clearly go against that. Keep reading, bro. To bow down unto it. Uh -huh. For I am the Lord your God. Go ahead. You shall keep my Sabbath uh -huh. and reverence my sanctuary. You should keep my Sabbath. But that's with an S. Okay, because not just the seven day of the week, but he got other Sabbaths that he said we should keep. This is coming out in the book, brother. All we're doing is reading to you out the book. I mean, if you're thinking to yourself, okay, that law was done away with, I can show you in the scripture where it ain't been done away with. He said, to heaven and earth pass one jot or one tiller shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Matthew 5 and 17. I can take you to 1 John 3 and 4 where he said, those who say they know me, 1 John 2 and 4, those who say they know me and keep not my commandments is a lie and the truth ain't in them. But that's in the New Testament. So why is he telling you in the New Testament to keep my commandments? In the New Testament, he said, those that love me, keep my commandments. Paul even said, the law wasn't a grievous thing. But we've been taught that we ain't got to keep it. The same thing we've been taught about not keeping the law, guess what? That's that same spirit that came on Eve and caused her to go against the Father. That same spirit that's speaking them lies. And we're getting taught lies in the church today. The same exact thing. The same exact thing we've been taught lies. Ain't nobody telling us we got to serve the God of this book. They give us two or three scriptures, and then from that point on, emotion. Take off. And if I come, if I meet you outside the church and ask you, what y'all talk about in church? Man, I do not know. I ain't got no idea. 30, 40 years of this, man. 50 years of this. Generations of this has been going on, man. And now you look around and you see these people going completely backwards because they done walked away from their God. The living God. Not a statue God. The one that brought them through the land of Egypt. The one who split the Red Sea. And show them his mercy. Show them his power. This is the God they dealt with. This is the God that took care of them and fought battles for them. And wiped people out for the children of Israel. And now we spit in his face and we spit in his face then and we doing it now. So that's why wrath got to come on these people first. You ain't seen nothing yet. When you see little things happen in Haiti, those are some of those are Israelites over there. Some of those, some of those are Negroes over there that are from the tribes that are scattered. But they saving the best for last. America, where most of most of the slaves are carried to, the Lord saving the best for last. Because over here we didn't got high minded. We don't want to hear nothing with what the book say. I can sit up here and talk to people. I can talk to my grandparents that have been in the church all their life. And I go sit down and say, well, you know, according to the book, we supposed to do this. First thing they tell me is, don't open up the book. Don't open the book, why not? Why we can't open the book and see what the book say? The Bible tells you no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So when I look at the book and I see it say Sabbath day, it should mean the same as what Sabbath means to you when you see it. If you see seven and you look up the dictionary, look in the dictionary and it says seven day of the week, and I look at the word seven and it says seven day of the week, then guess what? We should be worshiping the most high on Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Why is it that I look in here and it says seven, but I see people going to worship on Sunday? 
Why is it that the Lord said keep the Passover and he said that he was going to be in the earth three days and three nights like Jonah was in the belly of the whale, but I see Christian churches keeping Easter when that's from Friday night to Sunday morning. That's a day and a half. That ain't three days. How can you go to school and get all these degrees, masters, and all this type of stuff, and you can't add three? Are you serious? You can't give me three? I can't get three? With all these degrees, all this money you don't win in debt for, for, for this school that you go to, and you can't give me three? All I asked was three. Show me how you get Friday to Sunday, three days. When the Lord said he's going to be in the, in, in, the earth, in, the, in the heart of the earth, like Jonah was in the belly of the well, three days and three nights. But yet still, every year, every year, people going up, taking part of Easter, get Easter eggs, which represent, rep represent fertility, sex. You ever paid attention to the, the Playboy bunny? And then the bunny in the church? Yeah, can't you see it all comes from Satan? This is the same one that's been deceiving us. This is the same one that told us that we African American. But according to the Bible, we the Israelites, and we supposed to be teaching this gospel. Go ahead, read what you got, man. Where you at? The end of two. Go ahead. I am the Lord. Uh huh. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, uh huh. Then I will give you rain in due season. Right. Now go ahead, drop down the. Uh, okay. Oh, keep going to four. Keep going to four. And the land shall yield her increase, uh -huh. and the trees of the sh and the trees of the field shall yield her their fruit. All right, now what do you got? That's four. Uh, I'm at five right now. Okay, drop fifteen. And if you shall despise my statue, now if you despise his statue, he told you now he's gonna bless you if you kept his law, statutes, commandments. Now he's telling you if you despise his statue, what's gonna happen? Keep it, bro. Or if your soul abhor my judgment, if you hate my judgments, go ahead. So that you will not do all my commandments. Uh huh. But that you break my covenant. So you're going to break my covenant now. Okay? Now I did all this for you. I even reminded you of what I did when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. If you break my covenant, go ahead. What does it say? I also will do this unto you. So he's going to get at you. I'm going to also do this unto you. See, that's the thing. We think that the Lord, he just, like, he just sit back and, you know, he make the covenant. You break the covenant and you good. And you ain't got no repercussions coming. I just go ask the Lord for forgiveness. You still got to pay for what you did. Why do you think we're here right now? Why do you think we're in America right now? Why do you think we scattered throughout the four corners of the earth right now? Even though our forefathers broke the law, statutes, and commandments, I can't just come up and be born and say, Lord, forgive me, put me back. No, I'm serving my punishment. And that's the thing we don't got no understanding on. We think that he just uh, let everything ride, man. The same way you chastise your child, when he act up, guess what? The same thing the father does to us, but he allows the son to do it the same way. We get chastised the same exact way. But his chastise ain't nothing compared to what we do. Nothing. His chastise will put you on the ship and take you to another land. And I hide my face from him. So when you call me, I like I don't even see you. His chastise to the point where he'll make heaven and earth, he'll make heaven, iron, earth, brass. When you pray, you ain't getting nothing through it. I don't even know you. I'm going to hide my face from you. So until we learn and understand that he is the one that caused this plight on us, we ain't going to never come out of this situation. We're going to still keep going through what we're going through until you turn back to the law, statutes, and commands. Keep reading, bro. 16. Go ahead. I also will do this unto you. Uh -huh. I will leave in a point over you terror, uh -huh. consumption, Go ahead. and the burning of uh -huh. that shall consume the eyes uh -huh. and cause sorrow of heart. Go ahead. And you shall sow your seed in vain, uh -huh. for your enemy shall eat. So who ate the, who, who ate, who ate the, who ate the seed when we planted it in the field back in the day? Who was eating? Was we eating the Was we eating? Huh? From what I know, we was eating pig slop. Yeah, <laughs> we was eating chicken. <laughs> yeah, we was eating pig slop. We harvest the seeds, but we didn't eat them. We didn't eat nothing. We, we, we planted them, we harvest them, and the books say the enemy gonna eat them. We ain't eating nothing. You can't get out of this, man. It's only fits one people. Keep on reading, bro. 17. Go ahead. And I will set my face against you, uh -huh. and you shall fall, and you shall be slain before your enemy. Now, you hear what he said? I'm gonna set my face against you. That means when you set your face against somebody, you become their enemy. You don't want to have nothing to do with them no more. The Lord said he's going to set his face against us, man. So that's why you can see everything going on that seems like ain't no help coming. 
That's why the leaders ain't doing nothing no more, man. Because they ain't got no guidance. They don't have guidance at all. They look to people like Al Sharpton. That's who they look to. They look at TV Snakes. That's who they look at. And it long money. Money long. That's who they look at. They don't look at people coming out this book, but they look at the lavish life. Go on, keep reading, bro. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall reign over you. Go ahead, rule over you. They that hate you gonna rule over you. Yes, they hate you. <laughs> they rule over you. You can't blame them, though. The Lord the one called them. That's who you need to fear. And see, that's the, that's the problem with a lot of brothers. They so busy blaming the white man for this condition that you ain't giving the Lord the reverence. If you find out who put you in this situation and stop praising man for your situation, then maybe he'll have mercy on you. White man ain't do this at all. As I read this book, I ain't seen nowhere in here where it say, I'm gonna let a white man put you on a, slip and, a ship and send you into slavery. Nowhere. Everything I see, the plight that take place on the, it say the Lord. I the Lord, I the Lord, I the Lord. You broke my covenant, you broke my statutes. Don't say nothing about man, does it? Does it? And that's the problem. We sitting up here blaming man for our condition, so therefore the anger is pointed at man. But if you stop with the anger and really look at who did this and say, oh man, I'm going against what he said, do. Lord, I'm sorry. Repent. Turn away from the ways of the world and start keeping this book. And then you realize man, you ain't even got enough anger to cover you if you wanted to. Because all this stuff that doesn't happen to us, man, anger, anger can't cover this. Anger, you can be mad, man, it's a waste of time and energy to even be mad. If you're going to be mad at anybody, be mad at yourself, be mad at your parents, be mad at your grandparents, and your great grand however far back you can think of your parents, that's how, that's how, that's who you need to be mad at. Because guess what? They didn't raise you up in the truth. And matter of fact, some of them even knew, and still know today, but they won't tell the kids. So since you're ashamed of the Lord, you won't tell the kids they ain't supposed to be celebrating Christmas, okay? When he laid on the ground and the avalanche put a toe tag on him and stick him in the back of the truck, don't call me. Don't forget, remember, I told you your heaven going to be like iron. I ain't hear nothing. Ain't none of your prayers getting through. Nothing. That's why he said I'm going to bring you to naught, bring you down. Go on, keep reading, bro. The end of 17. Uh-huh. And you shall flee when none pursueth. And you're going to flee when none pursueth. You go ahead. And if you will not, yet for all this, mm -hmm. hearken unto me, then I will punish you even seven times more for your sins. What the book just say? What it say? I'm going to do what? Punish you seven times more for your sins. So let me ask you something, bro. If the Lord said I'm going to punish you seven times more for your sins, does it start to ring a bell? Like why we get more of a punishment for the same crimes as everybody else? You, you understand what the book is saying? I'm going to punish you seven times more for your sins. So put me up to some, put, okay, we'll just say, for example, put me here and put a white man here. And we both go in the bank and rob the bank. We both went out the bank and they catch me on this side, they catch him on that side. Who going to get the most time? More than likely, I'm going to get it. Why? Because the Lord left the law, statutes, and commandments with us, and we're supposed to know better. When you know better, you do better. And you teach your children, and they teach their children. So that's why. Matter of fact, when you, if you, if you got kids, okay, when I, was, when I was little, and me and my brother would get in fights, I would get, say, say for instance, we, we just, we go through the house and we just tear something up outside. I mean, we outside and we just, we do something, we take the water hose, just wet the side of the house or get throw mud on the house. You know what I'm saying? And we know we're supposed to, we're supposed to do that. But me being 12, him being 8, who you think gonna get it worse? The elder. Why? But why the elder know. gonna get it worse? You should know better. You should know better. That's why the Lord said I'm gonna punish you seven times over. Because you're supposed to know better. Because I showed, I, I showed my face, I showed my hand to you. I showed you me, I revealed myself to you. 
I chose you to do a work. I revealed myself through this book. I showed you myself. I showed you my hand when I brought you out of Egypt. And you still complain. You still go against me. Okay, so I'm going to whip you seven times through. I'm going to punish you seven times through. And that's exactly what we get today. So next time you hear about a brother, these brothers locked up for like five pieces of rock. You know what I'm saying? Crack cocaine. And then you got another man, uh, uh, these businessmen, downtown Atlanta, corporate America, getting caught with big old bags of cocaine, whether it be Atlanta, Tennessee, Florida, wherever they at, they get off understandable now. It's clear now. Because the Lord ain't expecting them to know no better. He's expecting us to know better. So we can teach them how to do better. But if we are, everybody else gonna be up. If the teacher, if you walk into the classroom, the kids playing in the classroom, and the teacher come in there and start playing too, you think the kids gonna stop? If you was a teacher, walked into the classroom, the kids in there playing, and you start playing with them, are they gonna stop playing or are they gonna keep playing? They're gonna keep playing. So don't expect nothing else. That's why the world jacked up. Instead of us promoting homosexuality, we jumping in bed with it. We signing off on it. Because if they can get the Negroes or the black folks to sign off on it, it's cool. It's on point. Would you say a majority of the, of the, uh, of the uh, blacks are, 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 are for, you touch upon homosexuality, you touch upon signing off on, on speaking of marriages, it, you know, with men and women, I know you're speaking in reverence to that, but that's a majority of the white culture passing that law. Uh -huh. It's not a black man that's passing. That's that. right. That, that's it's not a black man. I right. mean, we're we're involved in it, you uh -huh. know, because gays you got black gays and white gays and different races, but it's, that's a white man that's signing off. Right. Okay. But, but we should know better is what you're saying. That's right. That's I right. agree to that. But when you get to now. I'm not disputing anything that, that comes out of that book, mm -hmm. but when we're, when we're, when we're taught the, um, you, you're speaking of the blessings and the curse, mm -hmm. now the teachings just also come when we have me, the youth come where you're looking, so let's seek in that word, mm -hmm. let's seek in that Bible the answers of what we should do, right. not what we shouldn't do. Right, that's right. Now, what you're sharing with me, a lot of stuff that you're educating me with, I'm thankful for it mm -hmm. because a lot of things you open my eyes up to. But also, you should also share, said, now, let's search in this word because God said, seek me first. Right, and how do you seek him? Though? You see, through his word. That's right. So that's now what I'm saying to you is that we should go to... We should now go to search that let's find the answers no, you, to no, no, save no, our no, soul. If y'all invite us back, then oh, we'll yeah, go yeah, yeah, no, no, no. See, that's yeah, if y'all invite us back, then we'll, we'll, we'll go to that. That's not a, that's Because not see, a, what we do is, yeah. like I tell you, we, we, we spend hours on getting clarity. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I can't just give you five or ten scriptures, you know what I'm saying, to tell you what you did wrong and say, now let me tell you. No, you need to let it sink in. And you need to see the God in this Bible. So you understand when you walk out of here, I can't come back on Sunday, man. Because if I start telling you, okay, now let me tell you what you need to do, man, how everything will work out all good, you're going to forget. You need to see that the Lord is upset with these people. Now, as far as us, us condoning what's going on, your so-called leaders, man, this is how, see, uh, the leaders speak for us. They don't speak for me, but as a nation of people that speak for us. Your Creflo Dollars, your Al Sharpton's, Yo, Jesse Jackson, all these people speak for this community and they're not speaking out against homosexuality. You understand what I'm saying? They're not saying nothing. Matter of fact, Al Sharpton said a couple weeks on the radio, I'm the first president, I'm, I'm the first preacher to come together and do a rally for gay rights. That goes against the book. That goes against what Christ said. So anything that goes against Christ makes them what? anti-Christ. And that's what a lot of us are falling up under right now. Anti. Everything y'all do here in this church, brother, is anti-Christ. Everything. If you keep an Easter, anti-Christ. You worshiping on Sunday, anti-Christ. You eating pork, 
Antichrist. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Antichrist. That goes against what he said. He told us what to do in this book. It was clear. It's clear. But these theology schools have taken this book and told you it was a religious book when it's not. It's a history book. It tells the history of African Americans who were in slavery to Africans. Two different people. Not the same people, but they told you the same people. Why do you think when Africans come over here they don't like you? Because they know you ain't them. You think you them. Like when a brother said, you walk around wearing dashikis and they show up with three piece suits on. You thinking you been, you so uh, uh, so called getting your soul back. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back to the motherland. And when they come over here, they looking at you like you stupid. Man, we don't wear that over there, man. We come over here, we know how to fit in with what's going on. And on top of that, you ain't even one of us. We know who you are. So by us knowing who you are, we're going to do everything to keep you in the dark. So you got to understand, it wasn't just white people that did this, that the Lord called. It was also Africans. Give me Psalms 83 and 4. It wasn't just white people. It was Africans. It was Arabs. It was East Indians. It was Turkish. It was Polish. The Lord said, a stranger, all these nations came up above us. And now they're taking the spoil of us. So you got to let this sink in before you can find out how to get out of what's coming. Because the Lord got a plan in the book on how you're supposed to get out of here. The same thing he did back in the day when he brought the children of Israel through the land of Egypt. Guess what? The same thing going to happen again. But your pastors, not you, your, um, your, your pastors that's coming through the, the major mega churches because it passes down. It ain't y'all fault that y'all teaching this, you know why? Because the Lord said he calls y'all, he puts y'all in the deep sleep. But y'all thinking y'all going to heaven. The Lord said from dust thou art, dust thou shall return. If you're well, going to... Earl, if you, if you read, if you read, if you read, if you're well read in the Bible, heaven is here on earth. That's right, it's through heaven. And, it's God, through. and God it's is through. bringing his kingdom. On this earth. Back here. It's on this earth. And where is he bringing his kingdom back? Back into Israel. Israel. That's where That's he's right. bringing it. On Mount Zion. He said, I'm going to place my souls on Mount Zion right. in Jerusalem. Now, he's right now. See, a lot of people don't realize. Oh, yeah. People realize that they die and they're going to go to heaven. Right. right. That's what they taught. They taught that they go to heaven. Right. You, when you die, you're in a realm. You're in a different realm. You're in the dirt. You're in the dirt. Yeah, you you sit there. You, you go back you to thought, like from you dust you came from. You go to the dirt. From dust you came from. From dust thou, dust thou shall return. And guess what? You a dead soul. That's what you are. Because the Lord said when he breathed breath, the breath of life into man, man became a what? A living soul. A living soul. So when that Lord take the breath from him, what does he become at that point? A dead soul. A dead soul. But, Simple, man. But do you believe where your spirit is? Man, yo, the, the, all, all, that spirit is that breath. That's all. He just take that breath back. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what are we talking about this weekend? It's three. <laughs> what, which one? It's, it's right. three different kind of spirits now. <laughs> Three different kind of spirit, but the one you talking about is that breath. That's uh, John 27. Yeah, you talking about that breath. That breath that Lord bring it back, that's it. But that soul is laying there in the dirt, and it's going to be called up. Either the first resurrection or the second resurrection. Give me Psalm 83 and 4. What it say, brother? They have said, uh -huh. come, and let us, let us cut them off from being a nation. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. They have consulted together with one consent. So they came together and said, come on, man, let us cut them off from being a nation. So the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Okay? There was only one nation of people that was named after Christ. Christ's name was Israel. Okay? And then he named, when Jacob was wrestling with the angel, he was fighting with the angel and told the angel don't, uh, he wasn't going to let him go until he blessed him. Angel asked him what his name was. He said, Jacob. He said, no more. It's going to be Israel. At that point, that's when Jacob was adopted. And all his sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, came under that blessing. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes. And just so you know, the children that are sitting here in America, in the four corners of the earth, come from them tribes. And that's why we've fallen under the curses right now. 
because the Lord gave a blessing to us and we supposed to teach the sons of Adam on what they supposed to do to come back to eternal life. Ain't nobody teaching. Because a, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know that, that it's a first resurrection and a second resurrection. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people think that when Christ come here and set the kingdom up on this earth, that's it. That ain't it. The Father come. When Christ come, it's going to be flesh on this earth. When the Father get here, ain't no flesh. Period. Going to be nothing but the mortal bodies on this earth, according to the book. That's why I say when, when the Father come, ain't going to be no more seed. According to Revelation, seed is the people. That's why I tell you the beast ray came up out of the sea. But that's the thing that it ain't nobody being told. A lot of him don't know that it's going to be two kingdoms on this earth. Not at the same time. The first one, oh man, good Lord have mercy. When Christ said I was going to prepare a place for you, man, that's the kingdom that the Father is going to bring down. After the thousand year millennium, after the Sabbath that Christ is going to set up. See, the Sabbath that the book talked about, when it said God created earth, and in six days, then on the seventh day he rested, he ain't rested yet. The seventh day ain't even took place yet. You understand what I'm saying? That's the book calling it from the beginning all the way to the end. But he ain't even had the seventh day yet. But that's why he tell you to keep the Sabbath. Because you're practicing. You're preparing for what he's going to do. That's why the book say rehearse the righteous acts. These ain't nothing but a shadow of things to come. Ain't that what the book say? Mm -hmm. It's a shadow of things to come. Right, so when he get back, you practice in keeping the Sabbath. And then when he get back, you're going to understand why. Because when he get back, Satan going to be locked in the bottom of this pit for a thousand years. And during that time, Christ going to be teaching the whole world. You understand what I'm saying? If you ain't going to keep his law, statutes, and commandments, you're getting purged out before you even get into the kingdom. But during that time, it's going to be flesh on this earth. And they're going to be tried after the thousand years, just like we're going to be tried in these upcoming years. People like me, people like these brothers that teach this book, they're coming for us, man. They're coming for us. They don't want us telling you the truth. But guess what? It happened in the old days. The same thing. Why do you think they killed Christ? Christ was one of us speaking the book. Speaking the book. They had to get rid of him. Why? Because he went against what they said. He went into the church, turned over the tables of the money changers. That's going against their flow. When we come speak this book, we going against their flow. We going against their Sunday worship. We going against their Christmas, their Easter, their Thanksgiving. We got to get rid of you because that Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, the Pope, that's the one that's getting ready to set everything up. He's the one that's going to change the calendar and make Sunday the seventh day of the week. But we know, according to the Bible, that ain't how it is. But he's going to change everything. They're going to get rid of the Bibles because many, too many of us are starting to wake up. But the Lord said this is going to happen. That's why the book he said in the latter days, knowledge shall increase. And that's what's starting to happen. Who would have thought? Who would have thought you got young men understanding the book now? Who would have thought? But can't no man do this. This was all called forth by the Lord, man. I can read to you in Deuteronomy 30 what he going to do at the end. How he going to bring everything down. Like how even he, he called... In Deuteronomy 30, what's going to take place? How we going to wake up? How we going to turn back to him? Then he going to free us mentally? Then he going to free us physically and put us back? But he called it. What's happening right now, we start to be free spiritually. After we free spiritually, then we got to be free physically. Because he said, I'm going to gather you from everywhere you were scattered. The book said, I'm going to gather you from all the places you were sold. I'm going to gather you from all the places you were sold. That ain't happened yet, man. Only one nation of people was sold everywhere. And we still in them places. You still in bondage, brother. Try to leave the country without a passport. Try to go fishing without a license. Get in the car, take your tag off your car, and just ride and just take off up the street. Go through the red light and everything. 
Break yeah. the law. Now, in, in the Bible, it's written that you must abide by the law. It, that's that that's what I'm saying. You know, you in bondage. It's, it's written in to the, them. That is, that is in the Bible. So if you want to break the written law, you're breaking the law that's written. Right, because you got to follow the laws of the land. Right. You got to follow. That's right. And but I'm just saying, you know, right. your captivity, you can't go out to. Why? Okay. If the fish, if, 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 if the water was made by God, right? Okay, if the water was made by God, why you got to pay for it? Okay, and, and, and I, I can understand the infrastructure. I can understand the pipes and all that type of stuff. The cost, that being paid for. Well paid for. You're in captivity. Go out to the ocean and try to ride a boat without the proper insurance or license on a boat. Try to go fish without a fishing license. Watch what happens. Because this is not your rulership. This is your captivity. There are the people that are in, in control right now. Y'all just don't call them kings. But the, the same kingdoms that was ruling back then, all it was was passed down, and we sitting up under the rulership right now. We just don't know it. Because ain't nobody telling us that. We think kings are done away with. No, the Pope is running the world right now. He's over everything. And he's going to use all the nations that came in agreement that the book speaks about. What, the ten toes? That's going to come against all the people, all the saints of this book. All the saints that follow the law, statutes, and the commandments, and then all the people that say they saints, that's who they're coming for. And they're coming real soon. Oh, they're getting it ready. July 1st, the, 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 the European Economic Community, the Ten Nations, signed the deal. Just like the Lord told Daniel in the dream. The Ten Nations, the Ten Toes. When Christ come back as a stone, he's going to crush them. Why he gonna crush him when he get back? Because he gonna set his kingdom up. They not just gonna pass the kingdom over to him. They not just gonna say, here Christ, here, here's your kingdom. No, they trying to fight. That's what the whole war of Armageddon about. Because they gonna try to fight him. He gonna kill him. I mean, he gonna knock him off, of course, because the Christ is a spiritual being. Like he has hands and stuff like that, just like we have, but he's spiritual. We flesh in the mindset of us. The thing that we can defeat somebody that created us. Lord, read what you got, man. I'm gonna wrap it up. What you got? Uh, I just want you to see if, if we uh Daniel Daniel nine and five right quick. Daniel nine and five. Mm -hmm. Daniel nine and five. And you gonna go to what's the name right quick? Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of them. Okay. Give me uh, what's the name? Leviticus 40, uh, 26, verse 40, 45. What's you got, Daniel 9, man? Daniel 9 and uh, verse 5. Now, this is when Daniel realized, man. This is when Daniel had realized, he was like, man, the things that that the Lord said was going to come on us, I'm realizing that now it came on us. He realized the 70 year uh, captivity that, that was said that was going to happen to them. So now in this captivity, he realizing, oh, man, we in captivity. I finally understand what Jeremiah was talking about. Go ahead and read what you got, bro. We have sinned. Uh huh. And we have, com we have committed iniquity. What he said we did? Have committed iniquity. We have sinned. And we have committed iniquity. Go ahead. And have done wickedly. And done wickedly, uh huh. And have rebelled. And have rebelled. Go ahead. Even by departing from thy precepts. They parted from the precepts. Go ahead. And from thy judgment. And from thy judgment. So that's what, that's what the Lord was telling us back in the day, how to keep the law and the covenant. So he's saying we have sinned and we've de departed from thy precepts and thy judgments. Go ahead. Neither have we hearkened to thy servants, the prophets. Neither have we hearkened to the servants, thy prophets. And just like we come in the day giving you the book, the word of the Lord, because that's what prophets did. They spake with the word of the Lord. Now we read the word of the Lord. When we go to Daniel, that's a prophet. Go to Jeremiah, that's a prophet. We read what the prophets were told or what they wrote down. So now we're coming to you and letting you know, put down the ways of the world. Put down all the stuff that y'all doing, man. If it don't line up with the book, don't do it. If you can't read it, you ain't got no business doing it. But just like Daniel said, we didn't hearken. Go ahead and keep reading, bro. We're speaking by name to our kings, uh -huh. our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. Righteousness belongs unto thee, uh -huh. but unto us confusion of faces. Right, so righteousness belongs unto the Lord, but unto us confusion of faces. Why? We don't know who we are. When y'all was coming up, you probably was colored, right? What they call you? You was coming to color? Mm -hmm. Then they start calling you Afro. 
They are colored. First you came with, first you went from boy, colored, Negro, black, African American, Afro American. Now they got some centric thing out. Confusion the faces, man. Even in Daniel's day, he was saying, righteousness belongs unto you. You can't do no wrong, Father. Your word is pure unto us. Confusion of faces. I don't know what's going on, man. We gone now, bro. What happened? How do we get out of this? Confusion of faces. Keep reading, brother. As at this day. As at this day. Go ahead. To the men of Judah. Uh-huh. And to the habits of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And to all Israel. Go ahead. That are near. Uh-huh. And that are far off. Uh-huh. Through all the countries whither thou hast driven them. Uh-huh. Because they're trespass of what they have trespassed against thee. Because they have trespassed against thee. So what the book mean when it say they have trespassed against thee? They have not they, followed the word. That's right. They broke the law. They went against what he said. Drop down 11 and 14 right quick. And I want to show you something, man. Go to 11, uh, uh, drop down 11, read 11 through 14. And brother, you give me what's name? Give me Luke 13, 34 and 35. And well, I want to, I want y'all to see who this was that was giving them these statutes and commandments back then. Go ahead and read, but they ain't going to catch it. People in the church don't catch it. Yeah. They got to be taught by people who going to teach them the book. Go ahead and read, bro, what you got? Yeah. All Israel has transgressed thy law. So all Israel has transgressed the law. Not just Jews. All Israel. Israel is made up of the 12 tribes. Daniel's saying in the book, all Israel have transgressed our law. So why they just be pushing the issue of just Jews? First off, they make the Jew. You hold Revelation 2 and 9. We're going to hit that. Go read what you got, bro. Even by the party. Even that, by the party. Go ahead. That they might not obey thy voice. Uh -huh. Therefore, the curse is, a, is poured out upon us. Now, what he said, we had an option for the blessing and the curse, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what did they just say? Therefore, the what is poured out upon us? A curse. Curse. Go ahead and read. It's poured out upon us. Uh huh. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses. And the oath that was written in the law. <laughs> now, this Daniel, man. Some things that Daniel wrote, the Lord told him to seal it up for the latter times. And we the latter times now. But he was letting you know, man, oh my goodness, man, the oath that you gave Moses? Man, we hit it. We broke it. And man, I'm sitting up under captivity right now. The book is simple, man. Just gotta read. Just got to read. People don't want to read the book, man, because these theologists have really confused us. So when we open this Bible, man, we don't know what we're looking at. We just be like trying to go to Proverbs, trying to go to Psalms, and don't realize even in Psalms, Christ was talking in Psalms. Christ was in the book of Psalms telling you the things that was going to happen in the future. No one understand. Go ahead and what you got, man. The servant of God. The servant of God. Because, because we have sinned against him. We have sinned against him. We broke his law, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. And have, and have confirmed his words, uh -huh. which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. By what verse you at, bro? Uh, middle 12. Okay, go ahead. By bringing upon us a great evil. So he brought upon us a great evil. Go ahead. For under the whole heaven uh -huh. have not been done as the head have been done upon Jerusalem. What it say? Read that again for under the what? Under the whole heaven. From the end of heaven to this end of heaven. Ain't nothing like this ever been done before. Keep reading, brother. Have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Uh -huh. As it is written in the law of Moses. Go ahead. All this evil has come upon us. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. And it's still on us today. It's still on us. That's why ain't nothing changing. That's why you ain't getting no reparations. Because you came here as a slave. You didn't come here to get rich. If you happen to, it's okay. But make sure you keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Make sure he the one providing your wealth. You ain't got to sell your soul to go out against the God of this book. But you came here as a slave. When you come here to serve punishment, it ain't for you to have fun and have a blast. You are in a situation, a predicament that is hated, that is frowned upon. Go ahead, read what you got, bro. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, uh -huh. that we might turn from our iniquities Go ahead. and understand thy truth. Uh -huh. Therefore have the Lord watched upon the evil. So the Lord watched upon the evil. He looked at the evil. Go ahead. And brought it upon us. And he, made it, he brought it upon us. He watched the evil and he brought it upon us. 
It was like time. It was like time. Oh yeah. Yeah, they out of line right now. Let me just go ahead and drop it on the right quick. Oh yeah, they doing something else. Let me go ahead and drop it on the right quick. Watch the punch. They brought it to punch. This is this a punishment you can't get out of, bro. Until you turn back. When the Lord come back, that's when he say, I'm gonna free you from your captivity. That's when he say, I'm gonna gather you from all the places you sold. Go and keep reading, bro. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, uh -huh. which he doeth. Go ahead. For we obey not his voice. Wait, wait, that's it. We obey not his voice. We went against what he said to do. Mark, read what you got, bro. Uh, Luke uh, 13. Give me Psalm 44, man. Go ahead, read what you got. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Go ahead. Which killeth the prophet. Which killeth the prophet. Now, that's Christ talking. Go ahead. And stone is them that are sent unto thee. Uh-huh. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doeth gather her brood? Now, what do you say? Now, what does a hen do? A hen gathers her little flock of her, uh, what do you call it? What do you call Brood. A brood. So a, a, a hen would gather them and bring them under her wings. You know what I'm saying? And then keep them and protect them. Now, what did Christ just say? How often? Read it again, bro. How often I would what now? How often would I have gathered thy children? Would I have gathered thy children? Go ahead. As a hen doeth gather her brood. So he was speaking up in the Old Testament. He was letting you know I would have gathered you back then. But you ain't want to hear nothing. You kicked against the prophets that he sent. He was letting you know right there. Where that flower of people had. People don't even know that was Christ talking about the Old Testament right there. There's many more scriptures we can show you. There's a lot more. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot more. We can show you a lot more what Christ is uh, talking or where, where the book is, is letting us know that was him in the Old Testament. But I'm just letting you see that he was the one saying, he was letting them know I would have gathered you. I would have brought you out of that. But you kill a problem, you stone a problem. Go ahead and finish reading, bro. Behold, uh -huh. your house is left unto you desolate. Your house is left desolate. Go ahead. And verily I say unto you, uh -huh. you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name and of the Lord. And that's when you're going to see him. When he get back. Until then, your house is desolate. Your family going to be broken up. That land of Israel over there, desolate. Ain't nothing going to be able to grow over there. Why? Because the nation of people who's supposed to be in the land ain't in the land. So the land, the land is jacked up. We jacked up. We scattered everywhere. The original people that's supposed to be in the land of Israel ain't in the land. Because if we was in there, we'd be doing what we're supposed to do. Tilling the land every seven, uh, 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 letting it rest on the Sabbath every seven years. We'll be doing according to righteousness like we're supposed to do. But the people in the land, those are not the right people. They know who the children are. They know we scattered over here sitting in captivity. But the Lord gonna pay them too though. They got, they, got, they, got, they got reparations coming. For real. All the nations that had a part to do with slavery got reparations coming. Because the Lord said they went a little too far. They took it further. He, he, he put us under the captivity, but they took it even further. So they got to pay for it. That's in the book, though, man. This ain't coming out of my mouth. This is what the book says. Go read what you got, bro. Uh, that was uh, 11, where you at? Where you at? Psalm 44, go ahead, verse 9. For well, thou hast cast off uh -huh. and put us to shame. Thou hast cast off and put us to shame. Go ahead. It goes not forth with our hearts. It goes what now? It goes not forth with our hearts. Uh -huh. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy. And they which hate us spoil for themselves. That's right. They that hate us take a spoil of us, man. Go ahead. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat. They did what? They given us like sheep appointed for what? For meat. For meat. And hast scattered us among the heathen. And hast scattered us among the heathen. Go ahead. Thou sellest thy people for not. Uh huh. They sell us for nothing, man. Go ahead. And thou hast not increase thy wealth by their price. Hold your verse right there. Let's go to Joel 3 right quick and let's go see what it sold us for. The book is said they sell us for nothing. Let's go see. They sold us for nothing. Joel 3 and 7 right quick. Joel 3, stop. What is it? Uh, sold it for a Grecian for a, a harlot for a wine, a boy for a harlot, girl for uh, wine. Let me read it over. 
Okay. So for behold, in those days, and at that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh huh. Now this is doing the war of Armageddon. The Lord going to get all the nations and he's going to bring them down for Jerusalem, for the children of Israel, for what they did. He let you know in the book. This ain't happened yet. We're in Old Testament. They ain't took place yet, man. You understand? But you got to know how to read the book. But this ain't even took place yet. This is still in the Old Testament. He said, I'm going to gather all nations for what they did to Jerusalem. Go ahead. And will plead with them there for my people. And he's going to plead with them there for my people. In other words, we're going to fight. Go ahead. And for my heritage. And Israel. for my heritage, Israel. Go ahead. Who they have scattered among the nations. Well, they, who they have scattered among the nations. And parted my land. And parted my land. Keep reading, bro. And they have cast lots for my people. And they have cast lots for my people. Go ahead. And have given a boy for a harlot. Now, the book said they sold them for naught, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what the book just say? They gave a boy for what? A holler. They just gave him off so he could just get, they just have sex with him. For a holler. Yeah, man, hey, just take him, man. You know what I'm saying? Do what you want with him. If you got some land, sure, we'll take it. If not, hey, just have fun with him. What did he do with the girl? Go ahead. And sold the girl for wine. And sold the girl for wine. That they might drink. That they might drink. This is our history in this book. So my job is to make sure you wake up and turn to the book. So you understand that this God that you say you serve ain't the God that you think you serve, bro. This ain't the God. No. This God don't play the radio at all, man. And we've been taught that. We've been taught, man, that we don't have reverence for the God of this book. So we got to instill fear in you. What well, give me Proverbs 1 and 7. You got to have that fear in you, man, so you can turn back. If you don't fear nothing, you ain't gonna change nothing. If you ain't got nothing to fear, then why should I do anything different? If I go, go up there and hit a, a big 400 pound, a sumo wrestler in the face, and he just let me keep doing it, well, well I'm gonna keep doing it. If I can get away with it, I'm gonna keep doing it. But once he knocked the living hell out of me, I won't do it again. Because I fear what's gonna happen. So if you don't fear the God of this book, I don't expect you to change. He don't expect you to change. But once this word go forth, like it's going tonight, now you can't say you ain't been warned. It's a wrap. It's done. You would have been better not even coming. Because when the Lord sent his word forth, now he's revealing himself to you. All these people that done died over the years have been trying to find out about the God of this book. He's revealing himself. And he brought us to you to bring you this gospel. Now you got to really start searching. Go and read what you got. Psalm what, brother? 107. Psalm 107? Go ahead and read right here. Hold on, brother. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Go ahead. But fools despise wisdom. But fools despise wisdom. And destruction. And destruction. So you got to fear the Lord if you want to get knowledge. And what does that fear represent? It's representing a humble spirit. Okay, Lord, I apologize. I repent. I'm sorry for what we did. I'm sorry for what I've been doing. Please forgive me. Take me back into the fold and help me to follow your word, your law, statutes, and commandments according to your will. And don't try to justify it. Don't try to get around it. When your family and friends come up and say, well, hey, you know, you done changed, brother. You don't do get him after 10 or 34. You done changed, man. You don't, you don't hang out with us no more. You don't celebrate Christmas no more. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you, you, we, don't, we don't like this, man. You ain't the same guy you used to be. That's humbling yourself. That's putting your life on the line. Not in, in uh, that spiritually, you putting yourself on the line for Christ, man. It's going to come a point when physically you're going to have to do it. But at this point, spiritually, you're putting your life on the line. And let them know, man, I can't do what y'all doing, man. What does it say Matthew 10 and 34? Matthew 10 and 34. Go ahead. Think not that I come to send peace. The Lord say, think not, that I, think not that I come to send peace on earth. Go ahead. I came not to send peace, uh -huh. but a sword. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So when your family members start turning against you because you ain't keeping the wickedness of the world no more, that's what the Lord said. I didn't come to send peace. I came to send a sword, meaning I'm going to divide the wheat from the tares at the appointed time. I'm going to divide the sheep from the goat. 
And that's what y'all gotta understand, brothers. Y'all gotta come out of the ways of the world. We're not playing with somebody who's just gonna let you get away with this. It ain't gonna happen. This God is so cold that all these people that think they can cremate themselves and get out of this judgment, the Lord said, I'm gonna call, what did he say? He gonna call the flesh back from the water? What did he say? In the uh, book. The dead will be called from the water. Right, right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? People think they can cremate themselves and just throw their spray the ashes. Now in the end, the Lord calling everything back. What is it? I think it's Revelation, yeah. Revelation. Everybody got to pay. Everybody got to wake up one day. Either you're going to wake up to the first resurrection when Christ get back and get your reward at that point in mortal life, live forever at that time, or you're going to wake up to the second resurrection when the Father get here. And that's going to be the judgment day. That's what judgment day is. You being judged on whether you did what? Kept the law, statutes, and commandments. When you go before a judge, what are you going before a judge for? To be tried. To be tried, right? So, baby, Okay, when you go before the prosecutor and, and, and the, and the uh, I guess the plaintiff or the the, the, the defendant and the pros the defendant and the prosecutor, right? Mm -hmm. When you have when you when, say I'm a say I'm a defendant trying to you got the plaintiff, you got the defendant. Okay. When you sit up there, they, all they do is represent you. You understand what I'm saying? They just put the case before the judge. That's all they do. They don't give you your sin. You understand what I'm saying? Now when Christ get back, you getting your sins. We putting the case before you now. Your life right now, whether you keep going against this book, it's being put before right now. And when he get back, you're going to be judged on whether you kept it or not. That's it. That's all it is. It's simple. When you go before the judge, at the end of the day, the judge hit both sides. And when he done, he come with a verdict. Either you free, or you go up to the pen. If that's the consequences of the crime. You understand? That's the same thing. Where you think they get it from? Everything starts from the most high. Man just do it in the flesh. So that's the same thing. That's the same exact thing that's going to happen. Them books are going to be open. The book of life, and it's another book. What's the other book? Old Testament, New Testament. Yeah, man. Old Testament. And you're going to be judged according to the book. According to the law. See if you can. Oh, okay. When Brother Nate came to the uh, uh, flipping temple, flipping, flipping temple, and him and Brother Shafiq, Brother Demarcus, Brother Armand came and sat down and brought y'all the gospel. Y'all walked away, man, and y'all ain't do nothing. Lord, Lord, but we cast our devil in your name. Man, look here, bro. I don't even know you. You might just want to go ahead and get ready to burn, because that's your plot. It's over with. You done. It's a wrap. That's the God of this book. Y'all, they, they got us thinking that we can do what we want to do. All we got to do is ask for forgiveness. No, it don't work like that. You got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Then you come up under that blood. When you go in that water, you make that covenant with Christ. And then once you make that covenant, from that point on, all your sins that you do from that point on gonna be on you. Because the Lord said, you ain't crucifying me again. I die one time. That's it. And I die for your past sins. That's in Romans. He died for your past sins. That's it. And then if you make a mistake after you come under that blood, then he'll forgive you because it's a mistake. That's the advocate you got with the Father at that point. But right now, y'all ain't under the blood, brother. Y'all ain't under the blood. No. You know why? Because you ain't did it right. Y'all ain't got baptized. You ain't got baptized right. First off, the book tells you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What is that name? Huh? Jesus. Jesus. Pastors baptized. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bring them up. They ain't even get baptized right. I, you supposed to baptize, I baptize you in the name of Jesus and bring him up. That's how it's supposed to be. But if you understood the book, you will realize that Christ came in the name of the Father, Jesus. Holy Spirit came, witness of Jesus. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's the thing, brother, we gotta read, man. So everything y'all done did, man, as far as calling yourself Christian and stuff like that, it's been off. It's off. Now the Lord put us before you, man, so you can get it right. Now so you can turn back and do this thing right. Time is winding up, man. Time is really winding up. If y'all knew what was going on, man, y'all be living every day in fear. And what would that fear cause you to do? That fear will cause you to stay in this book. That fear will cause you to, when y'all open up the doors to bring the word of God, y'all in the scriptures the whole time. Besides praise and worship, choir singing a couple songs, and after that, y'all get in the scriptures and bring this gospel, man. All this stuff in here, man, this, this gotta come down. This is wickedness. This ain't, this is not according to this book. You might not see me again, I know you might kick my ass if you want to fight me back, but hey, while I'm here, I got a call. This stuff here, man, this ain't even supposed to be in here, man. This right here, this is all worship of Babylon. This goes against God, man. All this stuff, you got to research and see what you're getting into. Because everything that we've been taught, guess what? They gave it to us when we pulled up off them ships. The Roman Catholic doctrine, he gave you everything you partake in. When you celebrate Sunday worship, guess what? You are worshiping the sun. That's why it's spelled S-U-N, the day of the sun. Why they don't spell it? If they was talking about the son of God, why they spell it S-O-N? They spelled Monday M-O-N. Why they couldn't spell Sunday S-O-N? Because they weren't talking about Christ. They was talking about the sun. Just like they told you that the earth rotates around the sun. That's a lie. If the earth rotated around the sun, then why did Joshua ask the Lord to stop the earth, I'm sorry, to ask the sun and the moon to stop from rotating? From, uh, what did he actually ask the sun and the moon to sit still? So when the sun and the moon sat still, he was able to come up on his enemies. But they gave you Sunday worship. They told you the earth rotated around the sun. Why? So you can give honor to the sun, the S-U-N. When you read the book of Joshua 10, it lets you know that the Lord, that Joshua prayed and asked the Lord to stop the sun and the moon. And when the sun and the moon stopped, it stayed right. Then once he finished coming up on his enemies, then the sun and the moon went around again. That's the same thing that happens every day. This earth don't rotate. It rises and east, sets in the west. This earth stays exactly where it's at. See, the Lord put emphasis on the earth. The Lord said he wanted that this is the place he wanted to dwell. This is, is his habitation to dwell with man on earth. That's what it was from the beginning. He wanted to dwell with man. But we got kicked out of the garden because we broke the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, now we gotta start this thing. We gotta start, we gotta go down a whole line now to get back to becoming immortal. Because we was never meant to die, bro. What did, what did the Lord tell Adam if they ate of the tree? What, what was gonna happen to them if they ate from the tree? Surely you would die. Surely you would die. So if you don't eat from the tree, then what's gonna happen? You're going to live. You're going to live forever. So you weren't meant to die. So the Lord had to call the nation of people, or he adopted the nation of people to preach the gospel. To call all the sons of Adam back to him. And what was, who was that nation of people? Us. It was us, the Israelites, according to the book. It wasn't no Africans. Because they're not the same as Negroes. They're two different people. And they know this. They wasn't called to preach this book. We was called to teach this book, man. That's why when we came off the ships, they took the Bible from us. What a scripture where it say, or oh, sang us one of them songs. What y'all was singing, man. Read Revelation 2 and 9. You know the scripture where it say, sang us one of them songs y'all was saying. And they said, why are we gonna sing one of the songs when in our land? Put it, somebody type it in their phone, man. Y'all ain't heard that one? But they, 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 they went in the captivity and they were telling them, man, why don't y'all sing one of the songs y'all be singing? And it's like, why are we going to sing one of the songs we ain't even in our land? And that's the same thing today. They got us singing these songs. The Lord had the spirit with us, man. The Lord left the thoughts, that's the commandments with us. What you got? Revelation 2 and 9, go ahead and read that, bro. 
I know that works. And I, tribulation. Who said I know that works in tribulation? Go ahead. And poverty. And poverty, uh huh. But thou art rich. So he's saying, I know you're poverty. I understand you're poor. I understand you're going through something. But he said, You are rich. Now, how, how can I understand your poverty and you still be rich? You understand your poverty, but thou art rich because we are the ones that he chose to do. He came out of the heritage of the Israelites. Christ did. It's him talking. Go ahead and read, brother. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are what? And are not. And are not. What are they, brother? But are the synagogue of Satan. Are the synagogue of Satan. So them Jews over that land, those are not the Israelites, bro. The Israelites are sitting here in captivity and picking up all these different doctrines of the world, thinking that we fit in, man. That's all Martin Luther King did. The Martin Luther King, all he did was, he got it. Psalm 137, verse 24. Okay. When we came in the, when we came here, all Martin Luther King did was get us to fit in with all the all the customs of America. To be comfortable and, and, and say, you know what, man, I don't want to keep the laws in this book. I want to fit in with everybody else. I want to serve their God. And guess what you did? You served their God. Pentecostal church. You serve they God. Slave master used to sit in the back of the church and watch the people in the church, the women in the church. He would sit back in the back of the church and watch them speak in tongues. And made sure they shouted. He would sit there and made sure they were taught what they told the preacher to teach. Because if the preacher spoke anything else out of what he was told, they'd have two guys outside the church waiting to stone, I mean waiting to kill him. And that's what's happening today. The pastor speaking the same exact thing of the slave master. That's why you get 501c3 grants. Come on, man. That's why you get the 501c3 grants. Get up in your church and start speaking the truth. They're going to take that money, man. When you get 501c3 grants, nonprofit, you know what that means? That means you cannot, you have lost your First Amendment right of freedom of speech. So you cannot get up in that church and tell them that they are the Israelites. You cannot speak against homosexuality. You will lose it, brother. I'm telling you. When you serve the Lord, you don't need that. You don't need that. Let them have it. The Lord is going to destroy them anyway. The Lord is going to destroy all of us. It's all coming down. All coming down. Your soul ain't worth it, man. Your soul is not worth it. And that's what y'all got to understand, man. We, we, we can't keep thinking that we're going to get away. That we just going to be able to ride out and one day we're just going to wake up and we all going to heaven or we're going to be chilling in the kingdom. No, sir. It ain't going to happen like that. The Lord is not, hand is not short. At all. You will have a place in the lake of fire because you ain't going to break his law, statutes, and commandments. That's what it's all about. Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and coming back to the front. That's what Christ came for. That's why he came as the word of God. When he spoke to Moses then, he came as the word of God. That's why in the book of John, what it tell you? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word came into the world. And the world knew him not. You want to talk about the father? The father never came into the world. Christ came into the world. But he was the one with God in the Old Testament. So he came as a sacrificial lamb. That was it. He came on this earth to do away with the, the, the sacrificial lamb. So you ain't got to kill animals, bulls, and goats, and sheep, and rams, and he goats, and all that. He came as the pure lamb. Ultimate sacrifice. Without blemish. Ultimate. Now from this point on, you got to come under that blood. When you go in that water, the proper way, and keep, because see, when you go into that water, you're making a covenant now. That's why you can't get baptized when you're 15. Can you get married at 15? Would you let your daughter get married at 15? Would you let your, your daughter get married at 5? No. She ain't got no business going into the water at 5. Because you're making a covenant with the Father. You are now coming into marriage when you come under that blood. So when you come under that blood with Christ, you're now making a covenant 
to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and he's making a covenant to keep you and bring you back to eternal life and the kingdom. And he's going to represent you before his father. Now you got the hookup. But you got to be twenty and over to get baptized. That's why in the book it tells you that everybody twenty and over got kicked out. What was it? Twenty and over they got kicked out of the land of Canaan? They didn't even get to see it. They got killed. The Lord killed them. Twenty and over. When the Lord told Caleb and all the other brothers to go over to uh, look at the land of Canaan and scope it out, and when they came back, only two people had a good report. Caleb and Joshua. They had a good report. They was like, man, hey, the land is plentiful. Everybody else was like, man, there's some giants over there. They're going to kill us. They're going to rape our wives. The Lord said, everything you spoke is going to happen. I'm going to make sure it go down. Just like you said, because I just brought you out of Egypt. And you still want to doubt me? So I'm going to make sure everything you say come to pass. Only people that's going to get in that's 20 and over is Caleb and Joshua. And then the younger ones, under 19, go in. 20 and under, get in. All you other ones that's over 20, kill them. Came in and raped the wives and everything. Just like they said. They wandered in the wilderness, what, 40 years? The Lord counted a year for every day they was gone. You got to be 20 and over to get baptized, man. But what we've been taught, we taught at 14 to 15, we get baptized. You're too young. That's why, that's why nothing changes. If you don't fear the Lord, then the baptize, the ba being baptized don't mean nothing. When you understand that all this evil, give me 1 Samuel 2 and 6, brother, and you give me Isaiah 45 and 7. When you understand all this evil, and somebody give me Deuteronomy 32 and 29. When you understand all this evil that takes place come from Christ and the Father, then you will respect him. Then you will stop playing games with him. Then you won't sleep around. Okay? Then you won't have malice against your, against your brother. Then you're going to keep the Sabbath day. Then you're going to keep all these feast days like the book says because you respect him. We almost done, but say. What you got? 1 Samuel 2 and what? 1 Samuel 2 and 6. No, 1 Samuel 2 and 6. I got the 45. Yeah, Isaiah 45. Go ahead and read Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light uh -huh. and create the dark. Go say I form the light. Go ahead and create darkness. Go ahead. I make peace. I make peace and create evil. Uh huh. I the Lord do all these. Go say I, I the Lord do all these things. I make peace. I create evil. I the Lord do all these things. So you got to get in your mindset. This is who I need to fear. Not Satan. What you gonna fear him for? He's a ministering spirit. He ain't the Lord. He got to do what the Lord tell him to do. He can't do what he want to do. Why do you think you had to go get permission from the Lord to touch Job? Make sense, huh? He had to get permission from the Lord to touch Job. He couldn't just do what he wanted to do. What you got? First uh, Samuel 2 and 6. What's up? The Lord killeth. The Lord killeth. Go ahead. And maketh the lie. And maketh the lie. He bringeth down to the grave mm -hmm. and bringeth up. He bringeth down to the grave. The Lord kill us to make the lie. Not the devil. So when we're trying to drive home to you, you got to fear the Lord. And you got to turn back to this book, brother. Seriously. How old are you, bro? Oh, I'm 63. So you're 63 years old, and before you go home, before you go home being the Lord, however, however long that is, you know what I'm saying? But you cannot say you never got the truth. You got it, brother. You got it. And my grandmother, man, my grandmother, she had life, you know what I'm saying? And she was like six, eight years old, and one day she just happened to, uh, I think she choked on something, you know what I'm saying? And she went to the hospital, and I think she was about six, she was about your age, man, 63, 65, something like that, man. But she was she was real nice, man, nice grandma. And uh, one, one day she just got up, man, I think she choked on something, and she had to go to the hospital, but she died, you know what I'm saying? And all I think about, man, is how, how, she had a pure heart to serve the Lord. Turn it, all right. She had a pure heart to serve the Lord, but at the same time, if she would have known the truth, it wouldn't have been no stopping her. She would have made the change immediately. She was just going by what she knew. You understand what I'm saying? So now, brother, you went by what you know. Now you know something else. I 
plead with you to get in the book and get an understanding. Because if you're a pastor and you got people following you, man, it's going to be worse on you, brother. It is going to be worse on you. What the book saying, Matthew uh, 5 and 18? 5 and 19? Whosoever shall teach one of the least commandments, he should be called least in the kingdom of yeah, God. Yeah, whosoever shall teach one of them the. Uh, what, what is that? Say again? It says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and teach men so. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so. Go ahead. He should, be, he should be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. What is that? The lake of fire, bro. Because you bring your souls down with you, man. So we say it out of respect and love, man. But at the same time, we say it out of respect for the Father and the Son. Because that's who I feel. That's who I come on behalf of. That's who we represent. We represent God. This Bible, man. Don't, please, don't take it for, don't, don't, don't <laughs> think that we have never been in your shoes. I have. I have been in the Christian church most of my life. Most of my life. Pentecostal, as a matter of fact. Up until what? Uh, up until from, from a kid all the way to 1920, I was in Pentecostal. Left. Went to military, you know what I'm saying? Got out of military, hung around for about, you know, nine, ten years or whatever. Okay. Let's say about, okay, about seven, eight years I played around. And then, like, the, the other, during the seven years I played around, I was also in the world changes for seven and a half years. You understand? So I was just like, man, you couldn't say nothing about Creflo. You couldn't say nothing about the doctrine. I mean, it was just great. You know? I was gung ho, man. I was, hey, hey, I gotta be there. I gotta be there Sunday, man. I gotta be there to stand up when he walked through the door. Like he a judge or something. I gotta give him reverence. Because I thought that doctrine, that teaching was it. That ain't it, man. That is leading a lot of people to hate. And when people don't have no respect for God and the Son, they have no respect for hell or hell or the kingdom of heaven. To them, it's just, okay, whatever. And your actions show whether it's whatever or not. Amen. Your life and your walk shows whether it's whatever or not. And we just come to you, brother, hoping that it ain't whatever. If you don't learn nothing from us, man, go into the book and read. Because as, as, as men of the Lord that are called to do the work, all the, all, all the, all the men of Israel were called to teach this gospel. All of us work. All of us work. That's why the book tells you, Exodus 19 and 6, Israel shall be a kingdom of priests. What is that? Israel shall be a kingdom of priests, man. Yep, Exodus 19. Exodus 19 and 6. Israel shall be a kingdom of priests. I mean, we're supposed to be teaching. Who did Christ, when, when Christ came, he said he didn't come to, he, he said he didn't come for, he told the Canaanite woman, woman he didn't come for, uh, he didn't come for her. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then after he finished, but he, he dealt with other nations. You know what I'm saying? And then he also, then also he gave Paul the charge to go speak to the Gentiles. If the Lord just cared about Israel, why would he send Paul to the Gentiles? This gospel got to be preached to everybody, man. Everybody. Not the doctrine that y'all teaching people, man. That's, that's teaching people to hell, bro. When you come in this book and you read this book, this book is going to kick against everything that the theology school teaches these pastors. It's going to kick against everything. Everything. And matter of fact, the book ain't kicking. They kicking. They kicking against this book. They don't want to serve God in this book. And nobody wants to hear nothing from a slave. When you find out, man, I'm the, hold on, the Lord, Gave this to my forefathers? And I supposed to be teaching the world this? And you go out there and try to tell the other nation? They be like, man, you a slave. I'm gonna talk to you. Get out of my face, man, you a slave. And that's how a lot of people think. But when you speak in the God's honest truth out of this book, man, I don't care what nobody says. Your own family gonna come against you. We are living witnesses. But we had to stand firm, man, on the word of God. Not out here bashing no other people. Ain't no other people do this stuff. We did this to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to stop seeing the brothers killing each other, if you tired of turning on the news and seeing us get shot down, if you
you tired of seeing us die from all these different diseases, tired of going to the hospital and seeing us filled up on the cancer ward, you gotta start with yourself. You gotta start with yourself, bro. You gotta start with yourself, and if you got a voice in this neighborhood like this, you gotta teach these, these, these young kids out here, man. You gotta teach these young kids out here. Because guess what, man? If you got if you got an opportunity to bring the gospel, man, that is your job. And you ever did it, you're repping for a reason. I mean, even though the Lord say, don't call no man, brother. I mean, don't reference nobody, reference his name. But evidently, you took that office because you wanted to teach the gospel, right? It just so happened that it's not the right one. So now get the right one and teach it. And teach it. And I guarantee you, they're going to have a lot more understanding now. This gospel here, man, when you're teaching the truth, it draw people. It pull them like, oh man, give me Isaiah 29 right quick, and I'm gonna show you something. Or uh, 9 11 right quick. But this gospel, man, it, it pulls. It pulls people in like, man, I've been looking, man, all my life, man. I've been trying to find my all, all my life, I've been trying to find out the truth. What did it say, Isaiah 29 11? 28. I'm sorry, 28 and 11. For her stammering lips, huh? And another tongue. Will he speak to this people? Is it 10? This is refreshing. That's what? Verse, verse uh, 9. Verse 9? He says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Uh huh. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And who sh whom shall he under, uh, make to understand doctrine? Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk. Go ahead. And drawn from the breast. And drawn from the breast. Go ahead. For a precept must be upon precept. And that's why we go from scripture to scripture, because right now, y'all can't understand the need of this. Y'all mean y'all can be in the scriptures as long as you want, bro. But if you ain't in the truth, you ain't gonna really understand. You know, so until then, you gotta go precept upon precept. Okay? Go ahead, bro. Precept upon precept. Uh-huh. Line upon line. Line upon line, go ahead. Line upon line. Go ahead. Here a little, uh -huh. there a little. Uh-huh. For his stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And that's what he did. With stammering lips and another tongue, that's how we got this book. Because when we was over in the land of Israel, we weren't speaking this language. But the Lord said, with stammering lips in another tongue, will I speak to this people? Can you read? To whom he said, this is, this is the rest where you may cause the weary to rest. This is the rest, go ahead. And this is the refreshing. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. They won't hear. But this is refreshing, man. You hear this word and hear the truth, this is refreshing. But don't do like what the book just said, man. Prove the book wrong. But some of y'all ain't. But try to prove it wrong. Because the book just said, yet yeah, they were not here. But this is refreshing. Why is it refreshing? Because this is what brings you back to life. This is what you've been searching for. This is why you read the book and don't understand. It's like going around a circle. Year after year after year, day after day after day, and still don't understand this book. The way you can teach this gospel man is you got to understand who it was talking about from the beginning. Because in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 42 all the way to Revelation 22. <coughs> Genesis 46? We're, we're talking about Israel. It started in Genesis, I think, 36. All the way to Revelation 22 is talking about Israel. All the way through the book. So you need to find out who this is. The Israelites ain't done away with What did Paul say? I myself also am an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. That's in Romans 11 and 11. When you get to the end of the book, it tell you the, the gates, the, the gates gonna have the names of what? The 12 tribes of Israel. Find out who the Israelites are. And once you find out that it all hops back down to the people that came into captivity, then it starts to make sense. Then your plight, then the situation we in starting to make sense, man. We don't own nothing. We don't own nothing. Nothing. We are under Babylon or Babylonian rulership. The kingdom of Babylon was just passed all the way down. And right now, the Roman uh, Catholic Church or the Pope, that office is in, is in, in power over Babylon right now. That's the Bible mystery Babylon that we'll talk about. That's it. Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar came down to his son Belshazzar. 
Darius and the Medes, Cyrus and the Persians, came and took the kingdom from Belshazzar and his son, which was Babylon. Then after that, <coughs> Alexander the Greek, Alexander the Freak, I mean the Greek, and all his four generals came in and took the kingdom from Darius. The Romans came up. And that's who in power right now. This is the final kingdom. This is it. The Lord spoke of four kingdoms. Go read Daniel. He tell you that in Matthew. What did he say? Matthew, when the abominations and desolations uh, stand in the holy place, whosoever read them, let them understand. Matthew 24. So go back and read what Daniel dreamed about. And when you go back and read what Daniel dreamed about, you're going to understand that it was four kingdoms. This is the last and final kingdom. After this kingdom, Christ is going to set up the kingdom on earth. So now you got them trying to hurry up and get everything set up so they can fight against Christ. And they also know that your captivity ends when Christ gets back. Huh? We have to close up. Okay. All right, man. So that's it, man. We thank y'all for letting us come, man. We're going to be long with it when we get into this gospel. So, praise the Lord, man. Huh? Yes. Yeah.